This week on the Ritual Misery, I don't know why I'm saying it like that, podcast, <laughs> I got some sh- some progress done on my shed. Uh, Halloween happened. It did, it did. And so did Mandalorian episode or chapter nine, episode nine. Mandalorian's back. <laughs> the only thing that's important is we have Christoph Zajac Denek with us tonight. What's up, y'all? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 262 for Thursday, the 5th of November, 2020. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we have a guest tonight. His name is Christoph. I'm not going to try your last name because Kent practiced it before the show. Christoph, how are you tonight? Hey, I'm excellent. How are you guys? <laughs> Doing Thank you so well. much for having me on the show. I, I, it's an honor and privilege to have you on. I don't mind trying your name, but not like live on air on the spot <laughs> without some practice, because because I'm awful. I'm a I'm a I'm a bad human being. Oh, because you're suddenly afraid to embarrass yourself? Well, no, no, I don't. I don't. I don't <laughs> want to offend our name, guest. <laughs> my name has five speed bumps in it. I mean, it's a difficult <laughs> thing to say all together, you know? <laughs> yeah, not false. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the way it is. I'm the shortest guy with the longest name. Um, uh, so go figure. Not not inaccurate. Um, Kent, you, you did Halloween. Like, you actually did Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't do trick or treat or anything like that. Uh, we decided to keep the porch light off this year and uh, just avoid all the COVID, uh, just everything. So we, like I said, turned off the porch light. We made some nachos. We s- set our asses on the couch and we watched classic horror movies. Uh, we watched uh, the Town That Dreaded Sundown and a couple of the Halloween movies, like the original ones from the seventies and early eighties. And uh, it was a fun night. That sounds great. What did you do? I carved a couple pumpkins with some friends and watched Beetlejuice. Oh, oh nice, nice. Yeah, it was cool. I'd, ne- I'd actually never seen the entire movie of Beetlejuice before, which is so sad to admit, especially on a public forum. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> wow. But I hadn't, I hadn't seen the whole movie. I've, I've, you know what? I think I've seen every single scene just over the past y- years, but... Yeah. I finally put it together on Halloween. Oh my oh, god! Oh, right on, right on. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. It, it, I'm due for a rewatch. Um, I just rewatched it a couple of weeks ago, with, uh, just off a of whim. My wife put it on there, and we watched it with the with our our seven year old daughter and our five year old niece. Nice. Were they scared? No, no. They 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 laughed and looked at their at their uh, iPads. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds probably- yeah. There's probably scarier things on the iPads than Beetlejuice. So, oh, oh yeah, yeah. If, if you haven't seen a seven-year-old shaking from Five Nights at Freddy's, then you don't, you haven't lived. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, so, did did um did you make any progress on on any of your uh, home renovation type stuff? I did. Uh, we I now have power in my shed finally got power Excellent. it's actually going got the circuit breaker hooked up uh i went to home depot and got an in-wall heater so now there's heat in there so it's not balls cold and of course i haven't just i got that installed on sunday and i haven't had time to actually get anything done this week but i've got the installation in the garage i've got got the lights i've got all i, I plan on being done done like having everything moved in by the end of the weekend so pretty excited about that oh right That's on. awesome Right on. Is that now? Is that going to be a clubhouse, or are you just gonna like that's your your shed? Uh, I mean, it has heat, so it could end up being my doghouse. I mean, we have a cot, so <laughs> I I, oh, I, I guess my wife now has one more place for for me to go sleep instead of. You know. <laughs> right. Well, that's convenient. That's convenient. <laughs> uh, now you Bring know why I have heat. socks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's uh, and and the Wi-Fi. My, my Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, mesh point is here in my room and the shed is right there so i i get i get good wi-fi out there like i could you know kick me out good make you're gonna sleep in the shed tonight oh netflix <laughs> oh <laughs> damn 
Yeah. So how, how was your week, Christoph? My week was great. I, um, you know, I, yeah, I had a couple podcast guest um, spots this week, which was really, really cool. You know, um, that's why I wanted to, that's why I attended the podcast conference where I met Anthony Amos. And uh, yeah, it, so that was, that's been really awesome to talk about my show and, and do that. Um, I'm in Seattle at the moment and I have some really close friends here. So uh, a friend of mine has a, a custom jewelry workshop. And so I went and shot some photography Oh, with nice. him and I had probably the weirdest slash like um yeah it was a heart racing experience I got kind of cornered or like pushed down the sidewalk by a homeless woman whoa uh, whoa yeah which was I haven't had that happen at all and I was I was I got really really angry which I I'm a really mellow guy and I handle things I think with as calm of a head as I can. And yeah, I turned the corner, um, to walk to my friend's shop and this woman was there living on the street and she was just stepping in front of me and I would try to dodge and go around her and she would take a step closer to me and like <laughs> keep me from going whichever way I was trying to zig or zag. <laughs> So much so that she was backing me. She backed me around a corner and back like halfway down that block. And like, what the hell? I, I gave, I, I offer, I gave her my snacks and stuff and I'm like, I'm four foot, four inches tall. So, and I, uh, side note, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I've lived in Los Angeles. So I've been around homeless folks and people sure. who are, you know, messed up in the moment. And this was daylight and it was right next to a busy street and it was just, it was freaking me out. And the only way that she let me go by was because there was a, a bigger guy that walked up behind me and she saw his presence and she just kind of walked away. But yeah, so my heart got going this week because Good I just Lord. didn't know how that was going to turn out. And it's crazy. And now you have one more story for your podcast. <laughs> I have one more story. Yeah. Honestly, my this God. is, well, you know what? My my buddy who works there and has his shop there, um, you know, he sees her all the time and it he doesn't think it's like a drug situation, but he thinks it's just like a mental illness situation, mm, which is sure. really, really sad because, you know, this individual obviously needs help, you know, yeah. and there's been other instances. There were three instances that day that were recorded with people going in and out of there. And so I don't know. It was just uh I didn't know how to handle it. That was the thing. Like I'm I'm I like to think I'm really good at handling strange situations. Mm. I sucked in that one. <laughs> I just don't know how to have gotten how, how I got out of it. Jeez. That's crazy. Jeez. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe she thought you were Ike the Spike and uh, she was trying to uh, to do society a favor. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's the... That's the way you do it. Just corner me and push me off the <laughs> sidewalk into a yeah. Busy that's street. wild. That is wild, man. That's yeah, nuts. really, really kind of crazy. But you know, other people have had that instance too, and it's uh, it's kind of the whole mental health discussion. I think that it's sure. it's really tough to it's really tough to wrangle that and yeah. actually get the people who need the proper care, the actual proper care that they need. You know, um, yeah. It, so. It, so that's one of the things that's it's really easy to address. It's very difficult to affect positive change. Mm. You know, it, for sure. It's not hard. Oh, we're just going to throw more money at mental illness or we're going to do this or do that, but to actually genuinely affect positive change yeah. as a community, let alone a nation, that is a much bigger rock. Yeah, and the the people who are in these scenarios, like this woman is just one person and her actions are very unique to herself, you know, yeah. and the people that are directly affected by them. How do you in mass quantity, like address that? It's so hard. You can't assign like two people to every single person that needs mm -hmm. specific care. It's, yeah. I have, I have no answers for how to figure this out, but <laughs> it, I can, I, I definitely see how that is such a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Kent, yeah. Uh, craziness aside, or just bad placement, uh, the, Man <laughs> the Mandalorian, 
displaced me mentally a little bit this week. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, dude, man is back. Can't you know this about me? I do not like westerns. I'm not into spaghetti westerns or uh, uh, the any. I don't like westerns. Like it's just not my thing. But right. I love some sci-fi. Yep. And, and you well, throw you throw a sci-fi spin on a classic western story. And, yeah, like Firefly. Right, like I'm in. I'm totally in. <laughs> you, you're, you're taking something I like and something I don't like and making something I love out of it. And y- yes. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, The Mandalorian's back. I don't want to spoil much um, about the show. I just want to say that it was freaking awesome. And yeah. I am so thrilled that it's back. And I can't <laughs> wait for tomorrow's episode. <laughs> I need that uh, little... Uh, do, you, do you watch The Mandalorian? I, I have seen the show... I've seen maybe two or three episodes and that's it. And I think it's great and I'm going to watch more, but I I have friends that have worked on it. So uh, uh, I need to, I need to watch it to, to also see their performance. Uh, <laughs> that is, that is, yeah, that is awesome. The main, the main learning is so freaking cool. Um, are, yeah. are you, are you much of a star Wars fan? I am. So I am so bad with, keeping track of tons of characters <laughs> right. like anything i i it's so bad with that um yeah i i have i'm getting better i think at following characters and, and things like that but i was not bred to follow long storylines with very <laughs> with a lot of characters it's not mm-hmm. it's all, not in my dna all i heard was i'm getting better what <laughs> from <laughs> what is that <laughs> It's from Holy Grail. You wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. It's been not a minute since not dead well. yet. <laughs> oh, all right. Getting yeah, yeah. better. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> just a flesh wound. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I thought. I mean, the only thing that this episode was missing was the. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, I needed some spurs on somebody, and that was it, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was pretty mm. good. It was really good. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm glad Disney Plus is making this show just because the value that it really adds, it's not necessarily the story, but it's fleshing out so many things about the Star Wars universe that weren't, you know, these things aren't going to make it to the big screen. They're not going to make it into the movies. They might make it into mm. Clone Wars. But they went to some random town on Tatooine that I don't know, I don't think was any in any atlas any, anywhere. Like they just made some stuff up, threw a couple of buildings on a on a, you know, and they were like, "Here you go, make the story there." But it fleshes out just the Star Wars universe, and I love that aspect of the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty great. It it could not get a higher recommendation from me. It's it's wonderful. Okay, uh, I don't like it because it just adds more confusion to my world. <laughs> 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 Everybody has a detractor. Um, <laughs> so I, t- I told you I've been busy this week. I've actually been producing Daily Tech News Show all week, and I, I'll finish up tomorrow. Uh, Roger has the week off, so I've been doing the behind the scenes on that. It's not a heavy load, but it is time consuming. And I got to tell you, man, it's a whole lot of fun just being involved with a great crew like that and, and putting out an amazing product. It's really fun to have my fingerprint anywhere on that project. Oh, absolutely, dude. Anytime you get to work with Tom Merritt in any capacity, um, it's always a pleasure, I'm sure. Yeah, well, and it's not just Tom. I mean, uh, Joe, the the video producer, the guy that does the, the behind the scenes actual like media stuff, and then uh, working with Sarah Lane. And I, I got to I gotta admit, man, when Sarah Lane first came on, like when she was on Tech News Today, I didn't really care for her too much. Like I always thought she was... <laughs> she was she, she, honesty! Honesty is happening Well, right well it, it, it felt like she wasn't quite in her place. <sighs> and now that she's been on DTNS for a couple of years, she's been allowed to basically come into her own. And she's she's a great reporter as far as like the tech news stuff like that goes. And then she's mm-hmm. also a great person. And it, I'm glad that she found Daily Tech News Show and she left Twit. And she can now kind of spread her wings and and be Sarah Lane and and sh- they're all right. just amazing. It's it's just a great crew. It's so much better than the uh, the crew on this show. <laughs> I was gonna say like Tom Tom isn't gonna associate with any slackers, but then I remembered you're on it, so now I'm like now the whole now the whole crew is suspect. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it it happens it happens so if you uh if you hop on daily tech news show this week and you're listening to any of the shows and the stories are going too long and they're not getting you know the 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 the, the performance isn't how you expect it and some of the stories aren't where you thought they should be 
Uh, that's this guy. I'm not sorry. <laughs> You're an artist, man. Uh, you, know? you, you just you got to go with the flow, and sometimes uh, sometimes yeah. Sarah goes on a tangent, and you just got to let her let her go the way she's going to go because it's going to lead to a better understanding of something. There you go. And if you want a better understanding of the Ritual Misery podcast, <laughs> head over to patreoncom slash misery. <laughs> Show us that you give a fuck and give us a buck. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you'd be able to, if, if you're listening to this in your podcatcher and you're not a patron, we had a half hour pre-show with Christoph and we went over the possibly not true history of the grapefruit <laughs> vodka fizz. And I got to tell you, it was enlightening. It was amazing. I'm so glad that we rounded out the history of just one more drink and our, our, our corral of, of drinks that we've researched diligently <laughs> And oh, I learned a lot live tonight. On the show. <laughs> I'm 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 offended that you use the word possibly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, but yeah. So pre shows, post shows, exclusive interviews, all kinds of cool stuff over at patreoncom slash All right, dude. It's uh, it's about that time. We're gonna try to beat the D. What time is it? Yes. Um, powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Games. Games. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. I I got to figure out how to at least pump the sound to you guys. So can't you describe the game? I'm going to mess with my sound. Audience, it, it's going to break, <laughs> but I got to fix it's, it. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, all right, uh, Christoph. <laughs> The the running joke uh, when I play the games is that uh, usually if we don't have a guest, it's just Amos playing against the game itself. Okay. And typically, especially if it's a quiz, we'll have ten questions. And for the longest time, Amos was getting sixty percent of them correct, so he'd get six out of ten correct. So my my running joke was that Amos got the D again um as a as a euphemism so yeah. then when he would get 70 percent, i would say you beat the d and then if you get 50 percent or less then i would say you couldn't get the d so i named this this week's game i named it beat the drums or beat the d uh just to, to have a play on words i chose i chose the game that i chose because i know that you're a drummer and i know that amos wishes he was a drummer I would say Amos is a drumming enthusiast, there you go. Uh, but Christoph is a legit ass drummer. Um, so I found some of the coolest rock bands that I like, and I listed the drummers, and you guys have to tell me, when I tell you the name of the band, you have to tell me who the drummer is. Oh, I would do much better the other way, but let's do this. So, so <laughs> oh, we're going to take, this we're going to take, we're going to take turns back and forth. If you answer correctly without multiple choice, you'll get two points. Okay. If you ask for the choices and then get it right, you'll get one point. Okay. Uh, okay so, Christoph, you are the guest, so I'll let you choose if you want to go first or second. Um, I, I'll go second. Damn. You will go second. All right, Amos. Now, Kent always front loads these or back loads these, and I never know which one it is. But <laughs> like, he always he always designs these quizzes, so one person is going to have a way easier time. And if it's you, I'm not sorry. I love, <laughs> I, I love the, uh, the the extra element of stress. This is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amos. Your first band is Van Halen. Oh, uh, Alex Van Halen. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. Starting off strong, Amos. I, I almost said Eddie, and I was like, wait, no. <laughs> yeah, that would have been incorrect right. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, Christoph, your first band is Metallica. Uh, Lars Ulrich. That is 100% correct. I figured there was no way anybody's going to get that one wrong. Right. Even if you don't like music and you're just a fan of Napster, you would know Lars. <laughs> <laughs> Napster. <laughs> yeah, you remember true. that thing from 20 years ago? Yeah. Remember the cartoon where it had Lars as like an imp bouncing around on James's shoulders and he was like the big monster? It's like, yeah, Napster bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was delightful. Oh, so good. All right, Amos, your next one. Anthrax.
while I, your- I question the validity of you being a fan of anthrax, I clearly am not and don't know. <laughs> so, all right. So, your choices are Charlie Benani, Robert Sweet, Peter Chris, or Stephen Sweet. I'm going to go with uh, Stephen Sweet. Why not? I like alliteration. That would be, that would be incorrect. It's Charlie Benanti. Whatever. Like, you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Christoph, over to you. Right. Nirvana. Oh, um, oh, man. My mind just blanked. Holy crap. Can, um, I, can I go for the steal? Come on. You can't. You have your choice. Okay, Dave Grohl, that is correct for two points. All right. Amos, back over to you. Okay. Hopefully this is an easy one for you. <laughs> Motley Crue. Um, uh, what the hell is his name? You can get your choices. I, I don't want my choices. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, it's Pam Anderson's ex-husband that like went on a boat with her. What the hell's his name? <laughs> um, so, <you're>, so far, <laughs> talk yourself through it, man. Keep, yeah, keep, just keep going, keep, keep going on that. Something Lee. There you go. Oh, damn it! And of course, chat is quiet tonight jerks <laughs> you're trying to cheat <laughs> <laughs> the famous stalin chat um oh uh, damn you it are right there. i know and now now i've got the 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 mm song stuck in my head <laughs> you're so you're you're so close man damn it um, I God, I can't remember his first name. Okay, so if you if you ask for choices, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you the point because <laughs> you already said his last name. Right. Yeah. Just say Mr. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Long Tommy Lee. There, there you go. go. There you go. After much delay, <laughs> we got the right Look, answer. But I got it before chat gave it to me, so... Right, right. <laughs> That's important. All right. All right, Christoph, over to you. You have Aerosmith. Oh, darn it. Um... Oh, shoot. Yeah, don't feel I bad can... on this one, because I... I, I, yeah. I... I can, I can read the choices. I bet you'll get it with the choices. I'll, I'll know it from the choice. Yeah, because he just got released from the band, I think, a year or two ago. Uh, what, right, if so I know, tr- what if I know trivia about the drummer? <laughs> <laughs> if the trivia includes his name, I will give you two points. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Touche. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Uh, All right. oh, yeah, I'll take the choices, please. All right. Your choices are. Fred Corey, Stephen Sweet, Ted Kilpatrick, or Joey Kramer? Joey Kramer. There you go. One point awarded. All right, Amos. I would not have got that, by the way. Your band is Warrant. Oh, might as well just give me the choices and call it C, because I have no clue. (laughs) You don't Sorry, listen to Warrant. I'm this. This isn't even a valid question. You probably you probably never even heard. You can name one song by Warrant right now. Oh, Cherry Pie. Cherry Pie. No, oh, fuck yeah. That's like the only <laughs> song that I know. By <laughs> actually, same here. But still, I didn't expect you to get it. <laughs> <laughs> the album has a waitress on the cover. Yeah, and she's <laughs> dropping. Like, but, yeah, pie. but there's hey. so so many people attribute that song to Poison because they had very similar sounds at the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they didn't look all that different either. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there were 15 bands that had the same sound. <laughs> yep. It's Cinderella, yeah. Poison, Rat, War, uh, Rat. Uh, yep. <laughs> no, Cinderella had the same look, but they did, they had a different sound. Of course, I'm I'm a Cinderella fan, so I could. Oh well, that. there you go. There you go. Great white. Yeah, great yep. white. That was yeah. They tried to keep the rock and roll in it, but the hair got in the way. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, Amos, your choices for Warrant's drummer are Ian Pace, John Bonham, Stephen Sweet, or Jason Bonham? Uh, let's go with Stephen Sweet again. It is Stephen Sweet. Woo-hoo! One point. Boom. Nice. <laughs> And th- yeah, you said you were going to go with C. And when I when you said that, I read through the choices real quick, and I was like, "Holy crap, that is C." So so C <laughs> was Stephen Sweet, and I already told you I like alliteration. That was just that was the that was the pick. It worked Ooh, out. Lined up. <laughs> it's right, good Chris. I went second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which by the way, we have a tie game at five points each right now. Yeah, but I'm I'm a question ahead, so he's actually a point ahead. That's how it works. Wow. Well, Potentially. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Christoph, your next band is Iron Maiden. Again, uh, I doubt the validity of your fanhood of Iron Maiden. <laughs> I have oh, maybe I don't anymore. I, I had a beer bottle of their <clears throat> of their beer over here. I need the I need the list. My Iron Maiden knowledge is uh suspect <laughs> yeah 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 um all right so your choices for iron maiden's drummer are mr x guy man dude nico mcbrain or bruce dickinson it's nico mcbrain it is in fact nico mcbrain yeah i think One- all of those names could have come out of a, out of a name generator I know, I know. <laughs> nico mcbrain is such an amazing name no matter like whatever he should have uh, he should have a comic series, a comic book series. Like that's amazing. He should be fighting crime with drumsticks. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. How can? How is that not a thing? Because it needs Iron, to be. Iron Maiden's all, right. all into the marketing and stuff. Like, like I said, they have a, a beer collab that they did. Uh, they got all kinds of. I think they have a pinball machine. Like, there's got to be a comic book. Are they still touring too? I, I mean, so. when, yeah, I think they are. That's amazing. That's well, I awesome. mean, yeah, COVID notwithstanding, but yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, <clears throat> they're they're like really old. Like they're, I think, late sixties, early seventies or something. They're they, they're up there. They weren't young yeah. in their heyday, though. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. All right, Amos, your final band oh. is Pantera. Oh, I was hoping to say like any number of like eight other bands. I don't know Pantera. <laughs> Mm. I, know, I know like one song by Pantera, and I'm not even sure it's by Pantera, so I'm not even gonna say what it is. <laughs> like, okay. All right, give me my choices. All right, your choices for Pantera's drummer: Philip and Selmo, Rex, Vinny Paul, or Mr. X. I say Vinny Paul sounds like a cool like '90s hair band name, but that's not Pantera. But I'm gonna go ahead and go with Vinny Paul. You guessed correctly. There it was a nice go. one, man. <laughs> oh, the sun shines on dog's ass some days. <laughs> Christoph, the pressure is on. The score is tied six to six. Ooh. All right. You are on your final question. I'm going oh, to predict that you are going to <laughs> win this one. Your band for the win is... The Beatles. Oh. Oh, that is um that's uh Rango Starry. <laughs> Ringo Star. Rango Stare. Yes. Rango yeah. Stare. Right. <laughs> Ringo <laughs> Ringo Ringo Star. Yes. Uh uh Rango Planet or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um yes, Ringo- it is. It is Ringo Star. <laughs> ding 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 ding. You have beaten Amos eight to six. Ah, uh, I still got six out of ten. I got the D. Yeah, you got the D. Christoph, nice. he beat the D. Beat the D. <laughs> and Christoph beat the D right here, live on stream. <laughs> I was really hoping you'd go with Guns N' Roses because then I'd be like, "Do you mean Steven Adler or Matt Sorum?" And then you'd be like, "No, the the new guy with the the the." the... I should have. Yep, I should have thrown GNR in there. That'd have been great. Uh, I was yeah. wondering if you were gonna if you were gonna toss in Deep Purple. Oh, uh, and that too. That dude's awesome. All right. Yep. Uh, Great all right. game. That was fun. <clears throat> that was cool. Hey, and and I'm, I'm going to hit the uh, button again. Just so hopefully you guys can hear it this time so you can get the, the full effect. What time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! All right. Nice. 
Very nice. I still don't think it went All out right. on stream, but you guys got to hear it, so whatever. <laughs> so, um, so Christoph, we're we're very honored to have you as our guest this week. Um, you have a podcast that I listened to the first several episodes of, and I was very impressed with your story. Oh, thanks. So, and uh, beyond that, I looked you up because you said something about being in movies, and I looked you up in IMDb, and you've actually got a nice little list of credits. Um, would you like to, to, before we get into your story, do you want to tell our audience like what you're most famous for? Because I bet a lot of our audience has seen your performance. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, the, the biggest show that I've worked on, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. I am stoked. You guys are awesome. This is so much fun. I am so happy to be here. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. That just means um, I undersold it during podcast movement. <laughs> <laughs> no man you just come on for like five minutes and 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 dip out because we're just going to make fun of ourselves and no <clears throat> <laughs> no i love it this is awesome um yeah thank you so much for listening and thank you for for looking me up to the, the the show that i'm most proud of and that has kind of gotten me the most notoriety uh, is twin peaks and i get to play a really brutal murderous character on twin peaks and get my hands in some blood and get my hands uh yeah uh, taking some lives on that show so it it, it was an honor um <laughs> to it was on, an honor to play that type of role in anything you know just to have that type of action and that type of character but to do it with david lynch um he's such an inspiration of mine as a director and just as a, as a creative person. And I, I, I'm so proud of that. Um, even though it's very messy and uh, violent and brutal, it was, it was so cool. <laughs> and then also, also the, the cast and, and <clears throat> I've become friends with so many people from the original series. And it's just a nice family of folks, which it doesn't happen in Hollywood, you know, all the time. I feel like I've been absorbed into this family that's like, you're one of us now. And I'm like, uh, I don't belong here. And they're like, yeah, you do. You're here. <laughs> so it's, I'm, I'm very, I'm very grateful. Very grateful. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, that cool. And if you want to hear some behind the scenes commentary, which is completely not behind those scenes is someone else's entirely. Uh, Tom Merritt previously mentioned uh, founder and host of DTNS did a podcast about the Twin Peaks series. So Oh, awesome. Yeah. The the original series or the return series? Both. Awesome. They cool. did they did the original that's, series in preparation for the return series coming out and then they did the return series. That's so cool. That's really really cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. I love it. Tw Twin Peaks fans are they're diehard. They're a special type of individual and they're they're really respectful. They're really fun. They're really cool. They're so into it. I got to go to the Twin Peaks Festival in um, Seattle a couple years ago. They brought me up after the show had come out, and um, I got to meet everybody there. And I had a blast. It was it was so cool. I choked a lot of folks, like and <laughs> to them in photos. Uh, so I had a blast, and it was it was cool. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Um, what, one more, one more Hollywood specific question before, before I want to move on to something else. Um, yeah. can, can you tell me, this is not something that's currently out, but I was wondering if you could elaborate on what is ass clowns constipated? Um, that was, uh, a job that I did. Um, and I don't, I don't know too much about it. Uh, I know it's out there somewhere. I don't even know that I knew the title when I did the job. And I think it was just like a background thing that I worked for two hours or something like that. But a lot of these small productions, rightfully so, you know, they they dig into IMDb and they, they want to have their name on there. And they, you know, when people work a, or make their production SAG, even if it's low budget SAG, like you have to promote yourself and you have to get it out there in any sort of way possible. And so... Um, I don't know the script. I don't know <laughs> what it's all about. I haven't seen it. Um, it was a one day gig for me and that's really all I know. <laughs> that sounds like a good disclaimer. 
<laughs> but it uh, is the first thing you see when you go to my IMDb page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, uh, I, I will say, yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot here. We have a community. Uh, 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 we're part of a large community called Diamond Club that's associated with several different people and podcasts and all kinds of talent. We have a Diamond Club movie party once a month that watches um, sometimes good films, usually not. Uh, and they, uh, they, 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 they basically just have like an MST3K style group chat going on during the movie. Um, Love it. If that movie can be found... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna reach out to see if you want to join that night because yeah for sure i'll it, make two I'll, I'll make two grapefruit fizzes for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's perfect i'll make mine a double i'll make mine a double double and we'll do it <laughs> <laughs> who knows what i'll type into this keyboard <laughs> Oh man. Um, so you have a podcast. It's called uh I'm kind of a big deal. Your yes. your artwork is so good it's already been ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> by some high school kids wanting oh. to do a class project or something. Oh um, my god. I got that rectified by the way. Oh you did? Okay, cool. Yeah, it was <laughs> So wait, wait, so what's the story behind that? Some some kids uh just co opted it for their for themselves? So I yeah, my artwork is is a piece that I made on Illustrator. You know, it took me nine days because I don't know how to use Illustrator. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and um, you know, it has the title of my show. I'm kind of a big deal on the artwork. And I was just kind of googling the show just to see where I'm at and what comes up. And I typed in, you know, dwarfism podcast and my artwork came up, but the show name was not, I'm kind of a big deal. It was just dwarfism. And so I clicked on it and I'm like, wait, what is happening right now? And I listened to it. It was, it was like a six minute thing about, it sounded like high school kids or college kids just talking about what they thought life with dwarfism was like. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was very strange. And um, now everybody's going to like Google this and listen to that show. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're going to get so much traffic now. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I reached out. I, I posted because I'm in one. I'm in the podcast movement forum on Facebook, one of the groups. And I posted, you know, because I wanted to see what other people would do. And I think I got 135 responses, you know, from cease and desist and send your attorney over there. Uh, take them out, maybe like murder oh, them, you know, geez. don't do anything. Like I got all these different responses. Wow. And, and I just I just contacted Anchor and I <laughs> just said, hey, um, you know, please look at this because it's obvious that they, they've had this artwork up on their show for six months and I didn't realize it yeah, and anger didn't realize it either. So, but it was obviously just, you know, taken from mine. So and, and, it, and it's, it's basically an exact copy of, of yours. Uh, like it wasn't yeah. even, they didn't even like try to just modify it or, you know, tint the colors differently or anything. They're just like, yeah, we'll take that. They didn't even change the title of my <laughs> show on the thing. <laughs> they named it dwarfism. I'm like, what? <laughs> It's so, I mean, can you imagine any other podcast doing like how I built this is like, you know, a podcast about like fixing cars or something like that. Like I'm just going to steal how I built this is art. Yeah. So what you do yeah. is you put your face on there and then you put your co-host face on there and then nobody's going to steal it because nobody wants your two faces <laughs> on their, their podcast cover art. That's what we did. I don't, it's worked out <laughs> great. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, you know what? Now I don't believe anything, man. I feel like <laughs> you guys could get ripped off because they'll be like, that's pretty cool artwork. I want to take it for my, my school project too. Like, <sighs> oh man Ugh. i was honored that you know my artwork could support two different shows but then <laughs> i felt like damn it no this is mine i want it for me <laughs> that's awesome. wow uh, so um 
good. So talking about your show, do you want to do you want to uh, explain what your show is about? Sure, absolutely. Dwarf, um, you already see dwarfism, but is it just like defining dwarfism, or wh- where do you go with the show? That's a part of it. Um, my my show is called "I'm Kind of a Big Deal," and I I interview little people or people affected with dwarfism, um, and we talk about the the successes and struggles and funny stuff because there's a lot of funny that happens um, and that we encounter, and you know the re- just real day to day things that people with dwarfism and short statured individuals face. There's a lot there. Um, my goal is to create a bridge between the little people in the average height world, because what I've found is that average height people react to little people and I'm generalizing here, but average height people will react in a way where they want to make fun or avoid or not see us. And mm. so what I've found is that that's just a lack of exposure, education and experience with little people, right? It's, it's a defense mechanism that you don't want to accept what is in front of you if you don't feel comfortable with it or you don't understand it. Mm-hmm. But when people meet me and have some time with me, they realize, oh, you're just a dude. You're, you're, <laughs> you're a guy who can, you know, rattle off some drummers from favorite rock bands. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's, yep. it's not like you, sir, you are, you know, a second mini me from Austin powers, you know? And so that's, that, that's my goal with the show. I started it because my life has been so crazy touring in a rock band, loving surfing, working in acting and productions and being into photography and all these different uh, hobbies it's turned somewhat careers. And so a friend of mine was like, you, you have to talk about your life cause it's been so crazy. And that's where I started out was talking about my life. But I realized that once I put out an episode or two, the friends that listen to it who are short statured, they they commiserated so much Mm. with my experience, feeling shame, having uh, surgeries, being, you know, self-conscious or not having enough self-esteem to really accept and find yourself. And so I just thought it was this the better way to go is to interview my friends and and my story will come out, but their stories are so huge um, that I feel like, um, you know, they needed to have a platform and a voice. That's awesome. That is, that is awesome. And like I said, I have listened to several episodes and it's really, really good. Yep. Thank you so much, man. I I really appreciate you guys, you guys saying that. Yeah. Uh, So I, my, my job on this show is to make things awkward. And the first thing I'm going to (laughs) say (laughs) <laughs> is you, you mentioned people not wanting to see you or kind of ignoring you or putting you down and, and Kent gets that too, but it's because he's ugly, not because he's short. <laughs> That's, um, yeah. Okay. Not entirely. I mean, we all have our preferences, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to ask, cause you've, you've met, you've said it like five different ways. Little person, dwarfism, uh, short statured, Kent and I, we don't, we, I don't, I don't know that we know anyone afflicted with dwarfism. I shouldn't say afflicted, affected by dwarfism. Um, mm-hmm. What is the proper terminology, and what terms should we be avoiding in the comment in the in the current uh, uh, commentary of of our lives? Because, I mean, if it, it, if you don't tell us, or not you necessarily, but if we don't, if we don't know, if someone didn't say it, we're not going to know how our words are affecting things because we don't have the exposure. And if we go around saying the wrong things, we're never going to get the exposure because we'd be like, fuck that guy. Um, no. So, so get, help us out here and, and educate Kent and I and, and what audience we have on like, what's, what terminology should we be using and should we be voiding? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. No, uh, that is such a great question. And I don't mean to be, um, like a, a, a smart ass when I say this, but the most correct terminology is somebody's name. Right. You know, mm-hmm. that, that, that is, that's like top of the, that's uh, all of my guests that I talk to. They're like, you know, don't call me a dwarf. Don't call me a midget. Don't call me a little person. I'm, I'm me. I'm Christoph. you know, call me by my name. So, and in saying that, the reason why I say I'm not being an asshole when I say that is it just, 
turns us into a person just like that average height person that sees us that doesn't know how to use or doesn't know the correct terminology, you know? So that's, that's my first <laughs> step, like jumping off point to like humanizing this existence. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the next, you know, below that, I would say short stature is acceptable. Dwarf is acceptable. Dwarfism is the condition. You know, there are many types of dwarfism. Um, and little person is also fine. Midget is attached to, um, <laughs> What is it? I think it's like a sand flea or a sand fly or something like that. And so early oh. days, that's like what our existence was equated to. So that's oh. kind of where the, that parallel comes. People, uh, you know, it's it's exploitative and it's um, <laughs> it's offensive to call somebody that. Right. But, you know, little person, short stature, dwarf, I, dwarf. So is, is that word I... I normally hear that word associated with like either professional wrestling or some sort of like a carnival act or something yeah. like that. So when you said the word exploitative, like that's like, that sounds accurate to me. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I have people, I have friends that perform, you know, midget wrestling. Like that's what they call it. Even when they're talking to me, they're like, oh yeah, I'm going out on, you know, or I think they now call it micro wrestling. Um, my, my oh. pals that do it. But it's just kind of like like wrestling. How are you going to PC wrestling? You know, I mean, yeah, true, true, you gotta, true. like people aren't going to show up and to, to the like, we're going to the short stature wrestling event this evening. Let's uh, go have a good time at there. You know, they're like, no, I want to go to midget wrestling. You know, <laughs> it's just kind of it's going to be what it's going to be. You know what I mean? But I think, yeah, that there are PC ways to, to go about it. But if you can. Like just, I would, I would say if you're afraid to label somebody, try to treat them like they're just your, your friend that might have a disability or is just different or new in your circle, you know? That's yeah. awesome. Good advice. Very yeah, good advice. And, and, and again, I, I wouldn't, I would never come up to be, to first be like, Hey dwarf, it'd always be, you know, that, that <laughs> I, e- even in my in my messed up brain, I understand that's not that's not how that's supposed to go. But it is always one of those things where, you know, how do you describe a person out of a crowd? Like, well, there's sure, you know, there's if, if you're if you're <laughs> if, if, if if you're in South Carolina in, in certain places, you can go that's the white dude and you know who you're talking to because there's there's just not very many of us in those particular places. If you right. go uh, in North Dakota, you can go, oh, it's the black guy, you know, and typically if you're in a place and there's one little person, what terminology would I use to identify? That's the singular value that would identify that person, you know, and that, and that's where it, the descriptors come in. Uh, I, but for sure. Yeah. It's just one of those things like you don't want to be like, oh, that's, that's the, uh, the jackal pole. And you're like, yeah, yeah. you're not supposed to say jackal pole. Like, yeah. you know, you don't, you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I'm going to write that word down somewhere. I'm going to use that word. <laughs> Can we rate that word at the end of the show? <laughs> I, I give it one star. No. It almost, it almost sounds like he made it up on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, yeah, I get it. And like, I'm still learning with this, with all of this too, even myself, you know, m- being a little person and having this existence, I still have had to figure myself out. You know, I didn't just show up with like, I know exactly who I am and this is okay and stuff. Even doing this podcast, when I was talking with another friend of mine, you know, I said the same thing where I said, you know, it's the intent behind the words. It's not, if somebody calls, comes up to me and says like, Hey, are you a midget? I'm not going to be like, I don't want to talk to you. Like, screw you. You're an asshole. Right. I'm going to say like, no, actually, you know, properly. I'm, my name is Christoph. Uh, just so you know. And then also the, the non-offensive terminology would be either, you know, dwarf or little person or short statured. Um, but I had the conversation with a, a friend of mine on an earlier, on an earlier episode in my show. And, you know, I mentioned that it's the intent, right? That's, that's what's malicious. And then another guest later on is like, no, it's not the intent. Like, don't use the word. Use my name. Like, that's mm. the only okay thing. And I love that it's, you know, 
I was the one that teed up the intent thing. And then a guest of mine later on totally shot it down. You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm not running a perfectly tight ship here. It's, it's, <laughs> it's in flux. And I think that's the beauty of it. You know, like we're all different and we all want something yep. else maybe yep. than what somebody else wants. Right. Um, or in a certain way, like, and that's the thing too. Like you can't, there's no cure all. Like I bet if you walked up to some short statured person and you were like, Hey, you're a dwarf, right? Or can you like hand me something or whatever, you know, and use the term dwarf, they would, it's their own personality. They could get totally offended by that. And that's right. What yeah, absolutely. Happen, and know? that's, I was actually going to make that point. It's not like you're like the spokesperson for like this, this sect of the population or something like that. Uh, yeah. this is all, this is all your opinion and your, your viewpoint. Yeah. Uh, I represent me. Yeah. Most, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And but but on, on the same token, the only... on the same token, if we don't ask the questions and if we just presume, then we're going to be wrong way more than we're going to be right. So sure. please ask all the questions, please. Like, and, and I, I will say that the majority of short statured people were not afraid to answer questions. You know, so many times I've felt that talking about my surgeries or, you know, issues that are that come up socially they would bring the the vibe down with my friends or i, I wouldn't want to like burden people but and th and then it's reciprocal right because then if i feel like i'm going to bring it down then oh if you bring it up we're going to bring it down and so it's really tough to bridge that gap and right. break down that barrier yeah. but if one of us is brave enough to say hey i just want to talk about this you know i don't mean any harm by it let's just say something about it and you mm. know go hang out, whatever it's, it goes so far. It's a mm -hmm. huge step. It, it, it parallels the conversation. Kent, we had when we, when we had, um, a Royce on and we were talking about white privilege and things like that. It's a matter of trying to learn, actively learning, asking the questions, not in a demeaning yep. way, yep. but in an objective, I want to learn way. And I think that's really, that's, that's the, well, of course I say this as a average height person, you know, white middle-aged middle-class dude like <laughs> right <laughs> you know um but yeah i think that's yeah, at yeah, least yeah. to me that's what seems I, yeah I, I think that's a fairly universal thing uh just have an open heart and open mind and just be curious like innocently curious if that's a thing and um i, I think that'll do well in most situations i can't, would think can't i'm reading Dragonlance right now you can't say innocently cu curious without me thinking of a kinder like. Oh, right, right. <laughs> All right, with, without the kinder's mischief, I would say. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, Christoph, where, what part of the country did you grow up in? I'm from Detroit, Michigan, originally. Detroit, Michigan. Um, how did you become a surfer? <laughs> I've been obsessed with, with surfing, skate culture and surfing since I was 12, I think. Okay. Um my family would go to Florida for, uh, Easter, um, not Easter Island stuff, uh, but <laughs> well, holiday Easter. It's and, too bad. Uh, it would, it would have explained why you like the grapefruit, uh, vodka fizz so much. I would yeah. Know. Please, please go check out the Patreon and the, the, uh, the extra, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. The, the extra bits for, for more on that. Um, <laughs> Thanks but for the no, plug. <laughs> got you guys, man. Come on now. Um, I, uh, yeah, so I we would go to Florida and I, you know, walked into a surf shop once or twice and I was just obsessed. I thought it was so cool. I've always been obsessed with water. You know, the Great Lakes in Michigan, we would go to the Great Lakes all the time. You cannot surf very well on the Great Lakes um, unless you are uh, wearing an ice beard. Um <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have friends that surf and they have ice beards. Um, but yeah, I, I just became obsessed with it. And I I sent in a card from Surfer Magazine um, for a subscription. And I was, I was like, well, I don't know if they're going to deliver Surfer Magazine to Michigan, but I'm going to send in <laughs> my card and my check. You know, I was 14 years old and like newly had a checking account and a job. And so I could afford it. And um yeah, I just started reading every single magazine. I was so obsessed with with surfing. And then when I 
whenever I would get to a coast or an ocean, I, I would just rent a board for a day and almost drown because you surfing um, rewards the persistent and mm. you have to be on it so much to be to enjoy it and to like have fun with it. Yeah, this, I, this, I, uh, I been, oh. uh, this reminds Good. me of, of moving to moving from Southern California from Palmdale Lancaster, moving from Southern California to Indiana with a small town, Indiana. And all of a sudden, now there was skate culture because I wasn't uh, around any skaters in Southern California. Then I get to Oxford, Indiana, and there's a, a solid group of 10 dudes that are just skating all the time. And I was like, this is backwards. Yeah, <laughs> it's like 33 <laughs> degrees and raining, and they're still out there skateboarding. Yeah, trying to ollie over the fire hydrant. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yep. yep. You got to make do, man. I Yeah. I, I love that culture. I don't know why. I think... It was also tied in with punk rock and I loved punk rock then. And so I, I got, whenever I would get my hands on a surfing magazine, I would see the, the Pennywise or the no FX advertisements in the, in the magazine. And I would be like, I don't care what that sounds like, but I have to go buy it. That's, <laughs> that's going to be so cool. I know it is just cause it's in this magazine. <sighs> yeah. 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 I, uh, I lived in Florida for about three years and, uh, I had a buddy that was a surfer from South Carolina, North Carolina, I think. Where, where did you live in Florida? Uh, Panhandle near Fort Walton beach. Okay. And, um, so I used to go to the beach with him and I knew I, I wasn't going to be good at surfing, at least not right away. So I picked up a boogie board and, uh, I, I did that for a couple of years I couldn't say I was good at it, but I had a hell of a lot of fun when I wasn't drowning. <laughs> well, one of the things that I wish I had was a video of Kent trying to skate. Oh, because... dude. I almost <laughs> killed myself trying to skate. That would be... I would love to see that, too. <laughs> Like, like he, he That's was going to be up in the Patreon guys. So make sure you look for the video. The... Oh, oh yeah. If we can never find any footage. It, oh. it will be. Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, he, he was it, back when we were in, in, uh, Okinawa, uh, back in 2000, he, he got on my skateboard and was trying to do like an Ollie. And he looked oh. then how I look now trying to at, at 42, trying to get my, my seven year old trying to teach her how to Ollie. Like it's it's just it's just a pathetic existence, but you keep trying for no reason. Uh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's I mean, but that's what it is. You just have to keep pushing and pushing. And I think that's one thing that I love about surfing so much is there never there's never going to be two waves that are, that are the same. You always have to approach waves in the moment and react however you can do whatever you can on a wave. And every time I get off of a wave, even if it's a crappy wave, I'm still smiling ear to ear. So I just, I don't know, man, it just makes me feel good physically. That's so much easier for me to do than playing soccer, basketball, baseball. I have a spinal fusion, so I can't twist. Um, and so laying on a surfboard and popping up and riding a wave is, um, that that's what I, I want to do. And I want to do it as best I can. Have you, have that, you been to Hawaii really in February? I have not, but I would love to go and I will not surf the North shore in February because <laughs> that is, that is the winter. I, I know winter. Yeah. That's yeah. gnarly, man. I've, I've surfed, um, uh, Waikiki in like, uh, spring break time. Okay. And that was, yeah, I didn't drown, which was cool. But I, I would love to. I would love to see pipeline. I've never seen it. Yeah, or anywhere on the North Shore. Have you seen that in person? I've yeah. We I, well, I'll, I lived there for four years. So uh, unfortunately, my wife never wanted to go because she grew up in in Hawaii. So she was like, "This is dumb. I'm not going out there." Uh, yeah. But. Yeah, I've I've been out there in February during during the big waves, and uh, well, normally you go out there because in between Molokai and Oahu, you can get great pictures and things like that. That's when the uh, the whales are are cresting over between between oh, the wow. islands. That's their mating season, so they come to the warm waters. Um, so you leave there and you just keep going north, and you just end up. You can see the surfers out there; they're like tiny little specks, and the wave is like eighty five times higher than they are. And you just, you, you hope that person's going to come back and you just keep driving. 
<laughs> it's crazy, man. Like I, Ho- Hawaii is another world. I, I feel like surfing in California is. It's it's not it's definitely not the easiest thing, but it's so much more approachable than surfing in Hawaii. I think, because Hawaii, if if you are any, anywhere but like the mushy, you know, rollers, like Hawaii is gnarly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh man! Did you oh. ever, did you ever try to surf there, Amos? I uh, no. <laughs> I I don't like natural bodies of water that I can't see the bottom of. I that maybe too many times did I watch the uh, Dead Lake movies uh, when I was little or something. <laughs> but something about natural water I can't see the bottom of kind of freaks me out. Gets my anxiety too high for me to be concentrated on anything other than reaching the shore. I I feel that yeah. <laughs> Kent, were you into water it, when you were in Florida? I mean, you went to the beach and you bugged a little bit. Yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, I went out on a boat a couple of times, but um, yeah, for the most part, it was just I'd boogie board and swim, just go swim once in a while. But it was, I wasn't much of a, uh, he, I don't know. He was more of much. A, he was more of a boogie and beer kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. I think um, it, I think that's that's usually like a combo uh, incentive buy at the surf shop. If you, you get a boogie board, you get a six pack. I think <laughs> <laughs> that might be. Yeah, that might be. Boog Bo- and beer. Yeah. Hey Amos, you know what's coming up soon? I do. I do. Sooner, sooner than most people probably realize. Uh sooner than we realize until we talk about it. The the Diamond Club. This will be, I believe, the sixth annual. If if I, think so. if I did my math right, uh, that's what I emailed Extra Life today when I was asking about them. So uh, hopefully I got that right. This should be the sixth annual Diamond Club New Year's Eve 27 hour streamathon benefiting, presented by Ritual Misery, benefiting the Children's <laughs> Miracle Networks through extralife.org or dot com, Extra Life, uh, helping, <laughs> helping sick kids through hard times with their families. And it's it's amazing. And while we're doing the whole thing, we celebrate all over the globe, 27 hours straight so we can catch every New Year's Eve celebration in the world. We also have an active chat room because if you can't spend New Year's Eve with family or friends, you can spend it with us and you don't have to go to dark places in your mind. That's yeah. so cool. Exactly. And if you want to be a streamer for the for the New Year's Eve streamathon, yolo420.com slash 2020 streamathon. Uh, that'll get you to the sign-up sheet. Uh, so if you want to stream a game, stream a talk show, stream yourself cooking or making something or whatever, literally yeah. whatever, uh, get over there and sign up. The requirements are that you try to be entertaining. It doesn't always work. We get it. <laughs> you show up on your appointed time, you stream for the appointed time, and you are active in chat because that's kind of kind of a big deal. And all money raised goes to Children's Miracle Networks through Extra Life, and it's literally helping sick kids enjoy what might be their last days with their family, so their family doesn't have to come out of pocket to spend the time with their with the kids. So, absolutely. Hey, um, Christoph, before we yeah. move to the next little bit here, I want to say thank you very much for being our guest, and I would love to have you as a repeat guest. This has been. Yeah. An absolute blast. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, let's 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 do it. The next time I talk to you guys, I will be in a different location. So I will have a new background. So if you want to see me in a new background, have me on next time and you will see a different backdrop. Uh, that is awesome. That, that, could, far- that could be the shtick, right? Every time Christoph comes on, he's got a different background. Whether it's a, di- honestly, a different wall, honestly, a new hotel room, just, you know, there's just always a different background. It's probably a green screen right now. He's just <laughs> messing with us. It's not. It's not. It's that's, real. that's real. <laughs> Don't make me green screen this, Ken. I will green screen this and you'll be upset. If our audience wants to, to see more of you or listen to more of you right now, where would they go? Um, yeah, go listen to, I'm kind of a big deal podcast. Uh, it's everywhere. Um, and other shows are stealing my artwork, but look for the authentic 
I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram at Big Deal Pod, and my personal Instagram is Christoph Z D, C H R I S T O P H E Z D. Thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if, if you want to see more of what I've got going on, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Amos, what about you, dude? Uh, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. Ethan Kane on the Twitter. I am on there. It's a little political right now because, well, because, because politics. Yeah, <laughs> because because voting day and importance of humanity yeah. and stuff. Or you um, can follow the show at Ritual Misery and that feed is politics free it it certainly is it's completely pol- it's practically bereft of anything but it is definitely politics free <laughs> and if you want to join our conversation to include the post post show live chats go to bit.ly slash rmp discord and become part of our discord and you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website ritualmisery.com Thanks so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Uh, should be playing right about now. Uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Thank you for listening, for Kent, for me, for Christoph, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery podcast. See ya. <laughs>